Let's talk about the circle of Willis. What we'll do is we'll talk about the anatomy of the circle of Willis, and then we'll talk about why you need to know about the circle of Willis. We'll use this model right here, and we'll start by considering the two vertebral arteries. This is the right vertebral artery right here, and this is the left vertebral artery right here. They're going to come together in the midline to form the basilar artery, and the basilar artery is going to work its way up the brain stem, giving off a bunch of vessels. Here's the uh, superior cerebellar artery. Here's the right one, and here's the left one right here. The basilar artery is going to end up dividing into two posterior cerebral arteries. That's how it's going to end, by dividing into the two posterior cerebral arteries. So here's one posterior cerebral artery right here, and here's another posterior cerebral artery right here. The posterior cerebral arteries communicate with the two internal carotid arteries. Here's the right internal carotid artery, and here's the left internal carotid artery right here. The posterior cerebral artery communicates with the internal carotid arteries by these posterior communicating arteries. If you're in the know, if you're fancy, you can call those the PCOM. So here's the right posterior communicating artery, or right PCOM, and here's the left posterior communicating artery, or PCOM. The internal carotid artery is going to divide into two vessels. It's going to divide into an anterior cerebral, which is right here. So here's the right anterior cerebral, and here's the left anterior cerebral. They're going to communicate across the midline by the anterior communicating artery, or again, to be fancy, the ACOM. Now you can't see the anterior communicating artery right here because it's a model. The other vessel that the internal carotid artery branches into is the middle cerebral artery. You can't see all of it right here because uh, that's supposed to show it dividing, or rather uh, diving into the sylvian fissure. Let's go ahead and look at where the middle cerebral artery goes. So here's the middle cerebral artery. It's going to come out of the sylvian fissure and you can see that it's going to supply the lateral aspect of the brain. Let's look at what the anterior cerebral artery supplies. We're going to pull this brain apart here. Inevitably, I'll knock the camera over. Here's the anterior cerebral artery, and you can see that it's going to supply this portion of the brain right here. You can think about the um, portions of the brain being supplied by the anterior cerebral artery as forming sort of a mohawk type haircut, whereas the middle cerebral is going to uh, take care of the lateral aspect of the brain, and the posterior cerebral artery is going to take care of the posterior aspects of the brain. So why do you have to know about the Circle of Willis? Well, as you can see, because the Circle of Willis sort of ties the circulation of the brain together, it's a way of making collaterals, or it's a way of, of having collateral pathways to get blood to areas that might be uh, malperfused if somebody has uh, an embolism or a thrombus. Another reason for knowing about the Circle of Willis is because while it's a great source of uh, collateral uh, blood supply to the, uh, to the brain, it can also get you into, into trouble. The circle of Willis is the area where if you're going to have an aneurysm in the vessels that supply the brain with blood, that's where you're going to have the aneurysms. That's a very bad thing because aneurysms may rupture, and when aneurysms rupture, the blood goes into the subarachnoid space because that's where all of these vessels run. They run in the subarachnoid space. Blood vessels do not like blood in the subarachnoid space. What they'll do is they'll go ahead and, uh, and per perhaps spasm. And if they do spasm, that can cut off the blood flow to the part of the brain of whatever vessel is in spasm. And of course, that can lead to problems like infarctions. Thank you.